another beautiful day and time for another episode of Tax Matters. Last episode, we had two guests in the studio in the person of Mr. Ezra Zuberu, the regional coordinator of the Lagos Mainland East of the Federal Revenue Service and Mrs. Titi Fookon, the tax manager of Orlando PLC. And we've been talking about a variety of issues, self-assessment, tax pay identification number, and the rest of them. Uh, Mr. Zuberu, you are welcome once again. Thank you. Mrs. Volkan, welcome once again. Thank you. And of course, Dele is still with me. Madam, all companies like ministries, departments, and agencies have been designated under the VAT law, or maybe let's say the regulations that have come out in recent time as agents of collection. How are you finding this? Having to deduct with only tax and VAT at source and then remit. How do you find it? Thank you. Uh, that's been a big challenge for, for most of us in the oil and gas industry. Uh, for instance, um, when we talk about the issue of withholding tax, it's clear. Everybody is used to that. It's an advance payment of income tax of the other person. There's a credit note that we get from FRS, which uh, we have obligation to give to the uh, taxpayers. But for VAT, it's been a big challenge because um, the cost of even doing business is affected. When you're negotiating with a vendor and then he knows that you're going to do VAT, it's probably telling you, no, 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 whatever I'm paying you is net of tax because I know you guys are going to deduct VAT and then I will not have that VAT to offset. But what I have personally been doing is to educate them because there's need for education. There is no credit note to give for VAT deduction at source. So the only evidence I have is your invoice, your pay payment advice, showing that deduction of VAT and withholding tax has been made. These issues have been flagged with FRS at different forum, FRA, even during workshop, the VAT, the review of VAT workshop that was done, we actually had to tell FRS that it would be better when the VAT law is being amended, that section for oil and gas should be removed because it's like an additional burden. You, you are trying to get over withholding tax. You are also now trying to get over uh, VAT remittance on behalf of the vendor. But there is no uh, let's say credit note or something or evidence to give to the other taxpayer. And most times when they have audits from FRS, the FRS says, okay, where is evidence that you remitted VAT? And the vendor says, but my VAT was retail by the, by the other party. And they run back to us and say, we want you to give us something to show that you've deducted VAT as source. And that's been a, a, a bit of a challenge, practically, mm. applying that. So mm. I think it's one of the things I've always put on the table at any point in time when I have opportunity to discuss with FRS um, administrators and even directors that that aspect of the law needs to be looked into. I will ask Mr. Zuberu to react to this, but first of all, let me let me say a few things. I mean, when you talk about value added tax, is it not the agent, in this case the oil company, or let's say minister or department, that is the sufferer of that VAT? How is it a problem for the vendor? What I mean is, when something is being supplied to your company at 100 Naira, mm. the VAT of 5 Naira exactly. is supposed to be borne by your company. Yeah. The government has said, the doctor at source and remit. How is that a problem for the vendor? Now, for the vendor, you know, the vendor would have raised an invoice, VAT on whatever services is provided. Yes. And that is an output VAT for the vendor. The vendor is also expected to file VAT returns, stating that. Now, I would say, based on level of understanding of the vendor, normally what the vendor should just do is fill the VAT form and put it there. This is the VAT I've charged. That same VAT has reducted that source. I don't have anything to pay to government. And then file their returns. So, but it's, most times they look at it as if it's an additional burden on them. You're, it's it's out of taxpayers' education. That, that's where I will see it. And when you try to talk to some of them, they actually appreciate your explanations. And they say, okay, fine. The problem is understanding how to fill the VAT form and reflect the fact that somebody has deducted this VAT at source in the form and then file this with the FIRS. I believe that with that, if it's properly done, then FIRS should be able to take it off from there. What is left to be done is confirming that the other party, which is in this case the company that's enjoyed the service, has actually remitted the VAT deducted at source. That, that's the way that that could be managed. How do you react to that? Thank you very much. Actually, I would like to start from the last, uh, I mean, some of the, the last uh, statements you made in respect of taxpayer education. 
because much of the burden they appear to be uh, like the oil and gas companies in respect of the VAT has to do with taxpayer education because the normal thing is that I believe as they pay these taxpayers they give the taxpayer a payment advice and on monthly basis these taxpayers are expected to also file a VAT form every taxpayer is required to file a VAT return every month whether there is transaction or not whether mm -hmm. there's business or not and there is a provision really in respect of the output in res concerning the transactions they made for that period under review there's also a provision for tax suffered at source and as a matter of fact when you go in that very form there's also an additional provision in which the taxpayer is supposed to deduct the amount that was withheld the VAT that was withheld at okay. source be it an oil company be it a government agency or any authorized any authorized agency that is uh, mandated to withhold the VAT now if you're filing that return all that you need as a taxpayer to do please attach a copy of the payment advice along with the VAT form once you do that it will be very clear and the tax authority will know that this tax that was deducted as source was possibly deducted by or withheld by Oando. And I also want to say this for taxpayers. You don't suffer the burden for payment of VAT. When you're rendering the service, factor your VAT element, the 5%, in your invoice. Because the VAT in Nigeria is invoice based. Now, some of us avoid that, but actually we are only undoing ourselves because these agencies and these companies that have been mandated to withhold VAT, if you do not add that VAT element, they will presume that it's inclusive. Whatever you've quoted mm -hmm. is inclusive. So they will deduct, they will still go ahead to deduct anyway. Mm -hmm. So please take note, each time you are giving an invoice, state the VAT element separately so that they will know. And then coming to the aspect of the burden that uh, the oil companies uh, <laughs> are experiencing. Well, like I said, if we're able to educate taxpayers, honestly, it will, the burden will be seamless, just like the way we are carrying out and uh, handling this aspect of the withholding tax on companies and individuals in respect of contracts and the likes. Because fine, there is really no credit note as is obtainable in respect of the withholding taxes. But that invoice and then the provision in which the taxpayer is to be filing returns on a monthly basis suffices for the FRS. And once they see this, they are able to act on it. Are you saying that if I am a vendor, I do business with any of these oil companies yes. or these ministries, yes. once I file the returns in the month and say that so 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 has been deducted by Minister of Justice yes. or so so oil company PSC. Yes. It's okay for the FRS. Yes. In addition, I said add, I mean, I attach the payment advice that was given to you. Okay. At the point, yes. Okay. Yes. It becomes easier for us to verify. But mm -hmm. these days, for government, is e payment. Uh, where do I get payment advice? Well, we have methods also because normally those companies also file in returns yes. to the FRS. The vendor is a small man. There's really no. My dad's company is big, but that vendor is a small man mm -hmm. trying to survive. Yes. Potter call today, worry tomorrow, Lagos the next day. Mm -hmm. How does he ensure that he faces his business without uh, letter of hindrance? Most okay. of the times, what is obtainable is that when you don't provide adequate information people Sorry. have agreed yes. as several for that the frs is civil yes. mm. that there's no harassment yes. what i think is a problem with most taxpayers is that as in many things in this country documentation is almost zero yes if i have an invoice that indicates vat at the beginning there will be no problem moving forward yeah. i mean i have already stated it and i should also know that that vat is not even being borne by me is being borne by the customer, yes. Whether it's a ministry or another company, so exactly. when you have that mindset, you have no problems. Certainly, right? Okay, uh, madam, are you satisfied with uh, the little explanation I, that I, think I have some reactions to that? Uh, <laughs> because I, I won't lie to taxpayers. Uh, I'm also a taxpayer, 
that everything is as easy as ABC. From experience, there are, you see, transactions depend on the way you structure it. There are some transactions that you structure in such a way that in presenting the invoice, taxpayer education is one thing. The other thing is presentation of your invoices. Mm. If the invoices have been presented in such a way that the VAT, the base, there's a what we call the VAT base. The VAT should be based on what is your price. And 5% of your price, what should be indicated. But when you have a case where you are having, like you bought spears for repairs, you've provided service. The cost of the spears are not yours. You've actually bought those spears for the purpose of repair of those of that vehicle, for instance. You are, what are you charging? You're charging your service charge or labor. The VAT element there is always an issue because when invoices are presented, the person just say, total 5% VAT and they slam it and it's brought to my table. I'm not going to pay that invoice. Mm -hmm. The question would be, what is this related to? Because once you put in the 5% on the invoice, I'm taking it that the full 5% is what I'm paying to FIRS. But some people will come and say, no, 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 no. Those spears were bought and there's a cost to it. What I'm charging is the 5% for my service charge. So the VAT should be deducted, should be on the 5%. But the invoice presentation is different. So we always have those issues of taxpayers not even understanding what is the VAT base that they should be applying VAT on. And it's a lot of, you know, for oil and gas companies, we have a different types of contracts. We have contracts that are cost plus uh, whatever charges they're making. We have contracts that are outright full amount that you're going to be paying. So the, depending on the type of contract we're talking about, the application of VAT varies. So when we are doing our own responsibility by deducting on behalf of government, then the issue now comes as to what should actually be the VAT base. Because when the FR is coming for an audit of, of, my, of the company, for instance, FR is just take, what is your total um, equipment repairs? Five million. 5% VAT, bam, where is it? You should have deducted 5% and paid to government. But in actual fact, what I've deducted as VAT is not 5% of the total. So there's always been that, right? that challenge. Who is right? The issue that depends on the way the contract is structured. Uh, but for the tax man, sometimes you look at those structures with uh, suspicious eyes. That is because where the it may be tax planning. Is. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that what we do as a taxpayer at our side, is to break down the transaction for the tax man. Good. That in this amount that you have seen, this is the way the amount was built up. So the tax man will see categorically, supported with invoices that shows that, look, this person, this is the third party invoice to show that this thing was bought and that is the price he has charged. This is what he's charging for his work. Yes. And that is the service charge and this is the VAT on the service charge. So with that, we can now break down whatever I have in my, my account for repairs into the individual components. When and you that, break it down like that, do they agree? That's where, I, that's where I was taking him up by saying that FI should not just come and look at everything, but they should go and be sure that they are sure of the nitty gritties of the, of the business. Mr. Sbeth, when they explain things like this to you, do you agree? In VAT, we need to understand the whole concept of the VAT. Mm. You see, there are different types of VAT that is in operation uh, worldwide. And the VAT that Nigeria adopted is invoice-based. And that's why they have that challenge. And of course, and that's why I, I did mention that for every transaction you do, you should first and foremost understand the tax implication before you go ahead. Now, if you do not take into cognizance the fact that Nigeria's uh, uh, VAT is invoice based. Now you are likely to run into problems with the tax authority because we do not. Uh, other tax clients take all those things into consideration, and that is also, you know, coded in their tax laws. Ours, what is coded in our tax laws is invoice based. Yes. So, and I believe that also, like as like we talk of communication, it is also important if you are having such challenges, you flag it up with the tax authority, relevant tax office. That look, this is the transaction we are going into, and uh, what do you think? And I believe FRS will be there to advise. But if 
the transaction was entered into without the knowledge of the FRS, then most likely they may not accept those explanations because they might be thinking that the transaction is not really at arm's length. Now, what's it be this? Make it say, I will wear you. Ah, ah. Did you wear you side me to Moscow? Calculation is where we're okay. Madam, me correct now. Now, the price be that. You are playing with fire, so go. Me, I know, say, they never really search fast for the kids. Oh, you want to play me, why you? You want to sit me, Abby? Madam, now everything with the ad button top. Now, so with the seller. Mbo! Madam, you did correct, too. So go! Good day, madam. Any problem? Problem day! The team be say, we are not supposed to add VAT for baby items and other things with them for VAT exemption list. Sam! Chai! <laughs> This one now, uh, why your receipt? Oh? Correct receipt supposed to contain the things where you buy and the VAT will be on top. Then other items will not get VAT. You go put them separately. Madam, eh? I apologize, eh? You go change that. Change that. Uh, to pay for the compulsory, now government they use to make our life jolly, to collect and pay sharply to government. It is correct. FIRS, it pays to pay your tax. Welcome back. The program is State Tax Matters, and we have two guests in the house. Mr. Ezra Zuberu is the regional coordinator of the Federal Inland Revenue Service Command. I like to use the word command, the FRS command in Lagos Mainland East. And Mrs. Titi Fuokon is the tax manager of Ando PLC. And of course, Dele, my colleague, is still here. Dele, you have the floor. Taxpayers' identification number 10 has become part of the system in the tax administration in Nigeria and it appears uh, importers are having some challenges with the validation of tin with uh, the customs and the CBN. What appears to be the challenge? Thank you. Um, following the launch of the tin and the consolidation between the CBN, FIRS and the customs with respect to importation and foreign exchange um, transactions, most companies now are required to validate their tax education number with FIRS before they can be uploaded onto the CBN and the customs platform. The validation process has been a challenge and most times when uh, issues happen, we had to revert back to calling FIRS offices to request for it to be done. Uh, what we thought before was that we could do it from our office without even having to go to FRS. But most times when you get to FRS office, you get it done. But it's been a challenge doing it from our office. And this has been taken up with the FRS. And what I think is probably we're not getting it right or some education needs to be put in place for everybody to do. But there's been a challenge with getting it validated. And this has affected um, most of the importation and um, pro for instance for those who are into oil and gas their product purchase has to be done through the cbn raising of letters of credit and this has been a, a, a bit of a challenge so it's actually affecting business so how do we get around this uh, problem well the first thing we need to do we have been doing frs has been doing is to put our men on ground to assist importers on this issue but i might also want to say that really, part of the challenge we're having now is because as many taxpayers as you can imagine now are all rushing to validate their team on the FRS web portal. Like based on what you said, this uh, team validation issue was launched in 2011, over a year. Many taxpayers really did not really think it wise or did not think that it was really mandatory until when or it was necessary so until business. when it was made mandatory mm. so and uh, almost everybody that had one transaction to do with the customs uh, rushed at the same time FRS is able to assist in validating the team but you know they need a lot of patience for now but FRS is also working around the clock to ensure that taxpayers are not delayed uh, uh, on duly. but one of the things we also want the taxpayers to take note please they should ensure that they provide adequate information because if the information you provided in respect of the customs ncs cbn is different from the frs you, you might also have a challenge but there are three things that you need to validate your thing just three things first and foremost 
your GSM number. And when I say GSM number, please, it's just the 11 digit GSM number. No plus, no 009 or any of them. And then the uh, email address, your valid email address and your ad address, business address. Those are just the three things that are needed to validate your team. And normally when you get to a tax office, you will, if it is successful, it will generate a printout automatically telling you that the validation has been successful. But part of the problems most of the importers are having is when they are logging onto the uh, customs platform, for instance, or the CBN, if they're having challenges, please they should go back and look at those things. There could be a kind of a, a mistake or a discrepancy because even if it's a dot, it can alter everything because most of these things are not only case sensitive, but N figure sensitive or letter sensitive. So if after doing all of that, FRS is still there to assist and you're, you're still having challenge, FRS is there to assist taxpayers so that you don't suffer unnecessarily. How long it will take for you to clear my container? I did do a maga. Let's see we go bring our team. Our team? Which team? Custom don't change your And I never say I want to consult FRS with my business. I will talk to Gaba myself. You are fired. Oga. Oga Gaba. Which one be this our team again? The taxpayer identification number. Now the only way where you feel take do business with Nigerian Custom Service now will you feel process your own free tin. Sharp sharp for any FRIS office. So G. You don't suck me. No, 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 no. Get our team. Now, now, now. This message now from Federal Inland Revenue Service and Nigeria Custom Service. To shed more light on this matter and to find out why there seems to be little challenges here and there on this matter of team validation, we conducted an interview with the men in the thick of things at the FRS headquarters in Abuja, in the person of Mr. Kule Oli, a deputy director in charge of the ICT department, and Mr. Malik Tuko, a stand director, moderation group, who is also a business analyst with the FRS. That interview will be the main menu on the next episode of Tax Matters. Watch out for it. And for information on the closest FRS office to you, Chris Napayos is our guide. Welcome to Know Your Tax Office. This week, we are taking you to the FRS office in Mina, Niger State, and Ibadan in Oyo State. Do you reside in Mina? The FRS Micro and Small Taxpayers Office in Mina is located at number 2 Muhazu Muhammad Road, adjacent to the Nigerian Agricultural and Cooperative Bank Building, Mina, Niger State. The office also serves as a North Central Regional Office. Now to Ibadan. Are you a taxpayer or tax practitioner? Around Akinele Road, Ibadan North East and West, and its environs. The Warred FRS office is located at number 13 Lake Alabi Close, Alhaji Olawore Omokoro House, Abayomi Iwo Road, Ibadan or your states. The building also houses the FRS Southwest Regional Office. There you are. Every week we we'll bring you information on the closest FRS office to you. On behalf of the viewers out there, I want to thank you for coming onto the program. Thank you. That's from Delhi. Good night. For information and education on taxation, please watch Tax Matters every week on this station, same day of the week, same time of the day. And don't forget that interview on team validation with Mr. Malik and Mr. Holly. Bye for now. <laughs>